For the past 10 years, 47-year-old double amputee Dede Takai has risen early every morning and mounted his old and trusted wheelchair. Despite the real difficulties of maneuverability and the rough terrain, Dere is one of the more fortunate of the physically impaired. He does at least have some form of mobility. We're very um, keen in Australia to be independent and anyone that's dis disabled wants to be independent and do everything from themselves as if they possibly can and very often even lives alone. In Kiribati people live with their extended families and um, this, they don't have as strong a stronger burning desire to do every single thing by themselves and there is often someone available to give them a hand. People with disabilities are would be amongst the most vulnerable here because there's high un unemployment so it's hard for anybody to get a job uh, to get a paid job and uh, that means it's even more difficult for people with disabilities. The transport and the access are huge challenges to, to address. Many of these opportunities are still denied to people in wheelchairs because of access. Mm. Kiribati has no public transport system that can cope with someone in a wheelchair um, the roads are so rough, there are no footpaths. Our rehab building here may have wheelchair access, it'll be the only one in the country just about with wheelchair access. We often have a wheelchair user who is a totally competent, capable person, but because they can't physically get into a building or get to a place, they are denied access to work mm. experience or any of those sorts of things. Kerry and I have brought their experience and expertise under the umbrella of Australian Volunteers International AVI. They're based here at the local rehab centre at the hospital. Motivation Australia have funded uh, 60 wheelchairs to come to, to Kiribati. They're a rough terrain wheelchair, uh, 50 of them are. They've um, just got three wheels. The front wheel is a nice big large caster that can cope with all the rough ground. Someone will make a referral, it might be a family member come to ask and say, you know, is there any chance of a wheelchair for my father or mother who can't walk? Because we actually only have 50 of the rough terrain wheelchairs, we, we're having to be quite limited with who we can hand them out to. So we're assessing them and taking the most needy. Three of the staff from here have done a um, training program in the Solomons, a two-week training program in how to assess for these wheelchairs and how to put them together. We really have to often make do here. We might not, I can't just go to my store cupboard and grab a piece of foam or a piece of something that might be the right shape or size. I can't order a, a piece of equipment. Um, it really is looking at what you have and working out how we can adapt that or change that. A poorly fitted wheelchair can almost be worse than nothing. So um, that's why we want to get a really good fit of a wheelchair. Just this morning we had to fit a young man who had a very significant scoliosis, so a very crooked back. So the chair had to be totally different. Okay, we know how to make the standard one, let's make one that's different now. Almost like throwing out the rule book and, and starting again. Today's the day, and two clients have come to take delivery of their new wheelchairs. To actually see one is, um, their eyes sort of light up and it's so shiny and new, it, uh, usually they're pretty keen to get in. Dede is so keen to get in that he's climbed aboard the wrong wheelchair. Most of them seem, have seemed very happy with the comfort level of it. These have a lovely big cushion on them which is not available in any other wheelchairs in Kiribati so far. They can't believe how smoothly it, it manoeuvres around. The 
we check the fit then and sometimes we have to make some adjustments. So we'll check out all of those things. And now it's time for housekeeping. Then we teach them how to fold their wheelchair, take all the wheels off, put them back on again. Anything that they may need to do. Um, they get a little toolkit with their, their wheelchair. They talked through everything, even how to wash and dry the cushion. We would make sure they understand safely how to negotiate around on a rough ground. They don't want the wheelchair. We're trying to set up a process of um, follow-up that will um, how they'll be followed up by the team here. Um, I think particularly of one woman who's um, had um, difficulties walking for many years since she fell down a well as a child. Um, she missed out on uh, much of her education. The principal didn't want a disabled child at his school, so told her it was time to go back to her home island. Uh, she even applied for Teachers College, but on the grounds of her disability, they wouldn't accept her. Ah, that's good. But she found a way to do to work as a preschool teacher, so she did that despite her disability. And now she's been working as a caretaker in a Maniaba, but in a very sedentary way. Uh, so since getting her wheelchair now, um, she's not doing much of her, her role as the caretaker of the Maniaba. She's been going out to people's homes and praying with them and um, being like a catechist in many ways in, in, as a part of her church. And we have difficulty catching up with her because she's usually not home every time we want to see her. And that's, that's really exciting because... Um, she loves the fact that she's now independent. We can arrange for the physio to come. I'm certainly involved with the, the whole process of the wheelchair program. Maori, Maori. Maori, Maori. However, that's not the focus of my work. So my role is, um, with Australian volunteers is to work more generally with people with disabilities and to build uh, links between the rehab department here and with the Disabled Persons Organisation for Kiribati, which is called Totoa Matoa, and do community development work with that organisation. My name is Regina. In any given day, um, I might be going to a women's organisation in the morning My name is Duarte. and um, you know, an educational institution in the afternoon to talk about how we might be involving more effectively people with disabilities in those organisations. And I'm very aware that I've come from a very privileged background. I've had a good education, I've had access to good health care. And along with that, I've always wanted to, to use the privilege that I've had. Yes, I, I guess how do we finish? How do we... We only have another five months to go here. We feel like that there's, you know, years more work to be done. How do we finish in a way that leaves people ready to take themselves on? Um, leave, leaving people in a strong enough position to go, hmm, we don't like it how it is, let's see what we can do about it and fix it. Uh, we, I hope that we don't leave people passively waiting for the next imatung to come along and, and help them some more, but maybe have them in a position where they feel like they can, they'll take it on. Any small victory in the world of disability is hard won and very precious in their well-targeted work to bring benefit to the most needy and the grassroots. These two AVIs represent the very best of the partnership between Kiribati and Australia.